Hi and good day everyone. My name is Divya Ganesan with metric number 278157 and I'm from group 7 and I'm going to present about the pension scheme in public sector. Before I start my part, let me introduce my group members. Myself, Divya Ganesan, followed by Nurul Izati, Nur Shafawati and Muhammad Izwan. So let me start with the introduction part. Remuneration and rewards refer to the total compensation someone or employee receive in exchange of their services of work or contribution for a company or an organization. A pension scheme or plan typically serves an employee advantage that binds the employer to monthly contribution to a fund established to compensate qualified workers after they take their retirement. Employees may benefit from pension plan in the category of pay and awards. In Malaysia, there are three main bodies in pension system which are KWAP, Kumpulan Wang Persaranan for public sector, private pension administrator for the private sector and armed force fund board for military officers. Our group will be focusing on pension scheme in public sector. We have discovered seven procedures of pension schemes. First will be the eligibility requirement of pension scheme. Second will be the application of pension scheme. Third will be the approval of pension scheme. Fourth will be the types of retirement. Fifth will be the retirement phase. Sixth will be the that case of retirement receptions and last but not least is the retirement calculation discussion part the first point will be eligibility requirement for applying for a pension scheme there are few important criteria in applying for a pension and the most important of this is the public servant should retire by the obligatory age of 55 56 58 or 60 years old relying on the retirement age choice that employees picked among the most important qualification requirements in that applicant should remain in or her position in an organization without being dismissed by the top management due to the disciplinary actions furthermore the applicant must have appropriate knowledge in pension fund management and insurance requirement within the organization based on the eligibility requirement we found that pension scheme lack access this is because one of the important condition is the pension withdrawal need to reach the retirement age within 55 years old and above of the date of applying for a pension withdrawal meaning that as long as we did not reach the age of 55 years old we are not entitled to withdraw the pension funds discussion part the next point will be application for pension scheme first and foremost employees need to approach the jpa pension department to submit an application for retirement to her or his department head the department head will then forward the application to the public servant department jpa for processing and approval the jpa will then issue a letter of approval and a pension statement to the applicant the procedure of compiling pension documents by the head of department head of office and accounts officer begins at least 24 to 30 months previously to the preceded date of retirement of the employee furthermore the head of office must transmit comprehensive pension documentation to accounts officer at least six months before the pension date Last but not least, the head of office and account officer must review and approve the pension documents. The third part of discussion will be the approval of pension scheme. Firstly, the employees need to review their pension scheme. Furthermore, employees can also consult with a financial advisor to ensure that the salary allocated to the pension is balanced. Apart from that, employees can also make sure that some 
propose retirement plans with various interesting things. As an employee, updating their personal information is one of the most important steps that they need to take before the retirement. This is because accurate information will guarantee that the grant of pension to them. Besides, there are a few things employees should understand about the pension policy. Based on the article written by Olivia S. Mitchell and Stephen P. Utkos, employees are encouraged to make wise decisions related to finance and part after receiving the approval of pension application. After receiving the approval for a pension plan, we discover that there are numerous stages that the employee must be taken in order to enjoy a nice and secure retirement. This is because through pre-retirement planning, it is able to give benefits to employees. Thank you. My name is Mama Izwan and I will continue the presentation with the retirement phase. Individuals set to reach the age of retirement by 55, 56, 58 or 60 years old. Pensioners should make sure they provide complete retirement documentation to the Public Service Department of Malaysia or JPA. All these documents should be submitted not more than 3 months before their retirement date. So the retirement benefits can be paid according to the schedule. But the pension funds is expected not enough to meet the needs of elderly. That is why individuals should have private saving and asset ownership to prepare for something unavoidable at the future. Next, cases of death of the pension recipient. So, for this case, his or her spouse can receive the pension. According to the rule, children can, can, can continue to receive derivative pensions and dependent pensions until they reach the age of 21 years old or get married whichever comes first. Besides, for those who are studying for their first degree, will continue to receive derivative pensions as long as they do not marry or cease study. Derivative pension will continue for a child who has a neurological impairment or physical disability and unable to survive with their own. So from here, we can see that the derivative pensions are good financial resources to spouse or child of the pensioner as they need time to deal with the death of the pensioner. Then, I will proceed with the calculation of the pension payment. Pension payment is managed by the Public Service Department or better known as JPA. So basically, the rate of the payment is influenced by length of service and the final monthly basic salary received by the individuals. Based on the figure, the formula to calculate pension payment is 1 divided by 600 times final salary times the duration of the services that is limited by 360 months or 30 years. The approximate computation are different for every type of retirement which include compulsory retirement, self-selected retirement and retirement for health reason. The date of pension payment is different each year and is different for all individuals. So for information, there are some changes made in pension payment method which is from Scheme B, where the retirees need to present at the bank, to a much better method which is Scheme A, that is automatic crediting to pensioner bank. It is believed that the update of the payment system has made the process of paying and receiving the pensions faster and more easier. It is very convenient as people do not need to go to the bank anymore, especially all the people who have health problems or transportation problems. For the conclusion, a pension scheme or plan normally acts as a benefit for employees by requiring the company to make regular payment into a fund that is set up to a qualified workers after they retire. Apart from that, there are seven procedures of applying pension scheme in Malaysia. The first step is eligibility requirement, which is individual must reach at least 55 years old or above. Secondly, application of pension scheme. They must follow a few procedures in order to file a pension. Next step is approval of pension scheme. After receiving an approval, there are a few steps that must be taken by a pensioner and they can seek expert advice. The fourth step is type of retirement, which includes compulsory retirement, retirement for health reasons and yearly retirement. The fifth step is retirement phase, which pensioner need to provide all required documents 
to JPA no later than 3 months before their retirement date. Then, the next step is cases of death of the recipient where his or her spouse can receive the pension. Children continue to receive derivative and dependent pension until they 21 years old or get married whichever come first. And those who are studying for their first degree will continue to receive derivative pension as long as they are not married or cease study. Last step is calculation of the pension payment which is managed by the Public Service Department or JPA. Through our analysis and discussion, it has come to our attention that the issue can be effectively addressed by encouraging individual to engage in private saving and asset ownership that can ensure financial stability and good retirement planning for the old days. That's all. Thank you.